Hello everyone, my name is Dan Ho Tong Minh. So uh, let me turn up the um, webcam for more convenience. So the IEEE Visual Science and Remote Sensing Societies are working on to uh, offer um, a series of up-to-date educational lectures on the basis of uh, remote sensing and uh, technology. So um, I'm pleased to participate in this framework I will show you uh, the most uh, diverse open source on uh, persistent and distributed scatter radar interferometry. So uh, here is uh, my personal information where you can find me. I am an active instructor for the radar interferometry class in IGAT conference. I am a researcher specializing in radar interferometry and tomography. My main research objective is to raise awareness on the importance of radar or data to provide spatial information to better monitoring the Earth's surface environments. Here, I will begin to spend a few words about the radar. So, uh, some of you are so uh, familiar with radar. Radar is just uh, an old technique that was developed about 100 years ago by a German engineer. Specifically, it is a signal a transmitter and a receiver based on the delay of this received signal. We can get the measurement of the distance from the radar to the target. This radar system can be on the ground. For example, we can see this at airports. It can be placed in aircraft or even in the satellites. Then, based on radar signal processing, we can acquire land surface images because it's synthesis above the radar or simply SA. The SA data is the leading actor of our story. In everything we do, we use in SA data that contains the distant measurements. The European Space Agency has been a um, pioneer in SA satellite since 1992. The original purpose was limited to scientific research, so very few images could be processed and very few people knew about it. Talking about SA data in the past is like talking about something very fantasy. It was in 2014, that the new Sending One constellation allow us to capture images globally and mainly provide them for free systematically. Since then, the number of new users has been exploded. Here I will begin to explain how motion can be measured from Spain. So again, radar is a technique that allows us to measure the distance from the satellite to the targets on the ground line. And at R1, in the first measurement here, the distance measured R1 can be understood as a zoom of the wavelength plus a residue. The R1 can be measured as a satellite to target through like this one. So the advantage of the satellite is that they can return to the same position to collect the data after a certain period. We assume that during this period, there is a, a deformation, so that subsidence, earthquake, volcano, and so on. And that caused the target's position to be changed. First, we have the measurements at two. Accordingly, by taking the difference of the R1 and R2, we can directly calculate the delta R difference here. This formula can convert the delta R difference to the delta phase, phase difference because we know that one lambda wavelength corresponding to one phase cycle, either to pi or 360 degree. Because this phase difference is 
interferon particular phase with a wavelength of about 5.6 centimeters, like C-band, the interferon particular phase could be extremely sensitivity to any displacement, any motion on the Earth's surface. The image that contains this phase information we call an interferogram. The basic idea for the displacement mapping is to get the data before and after the event. We can then compute the interferogram and quantify its phase difference, and that is the principle of INSA. So, is it easy? Sometimes it's, uh, it is straightforward. This figure is uh, one of the most famous interferograms. What can we see? Is, it, is this a lovely butterfly? We can see her eyes, one closed and one open, winking and smiling at Earth. She is charming. But this is our image of the Earth's surface after a natural disaster, an earthquake. On the night of uh, December 26, 2003, uh, an earthquake 6.5 magnitude at a depth of 10 kilometer in the city center of Bam, Iran, devastated the city and killed more than 26 people. In this context, many scientists have tried to contribute to the contribution, the relief. Quote, many people work on INSA. The same is before the earthquake was subtracted from the second one after the earthquake and form this, infer in this interferogram. The interferogram corresponds to, to a matrix of uh, numeric value vary from minus pi to plus pi. A phase cycle to pi will produce a fringe. We produce a fringe corresponding to about 28 millimeter. It can be seen that the same color cycle from red to yellow and blue to, to red. So the red color is repeat here over and over again. The concept of fringe is very similar, like similar or very familiar with earth, like good and like fringe. The earthquake is in the center of the city, so affected the um, the central uh, affected the central part the most. So now we can we we can quantify it to understand better the deformation caused by the earthquake. We assume about ten kilometer away from the center, and the surface is stable or unchanged in uh, after the earthquake. So I'll suppose it in the yellow uh, area like this one. So we see that from here, from from here to here, the yellow is represent about one fringe. So this means is we form about uh, one displacement about 28 millimeter. So therefore, by just counting the number of fringes, by uh, we can uh, understand the the displacement like this one. We can count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then based on uh, from that we can uh, know whether it is sinking or rising. Uh, so for example, we can see here in this one is about seventeen centimeter going down, and the other one is. The opposite way is about 28 centimeters going up. So, so straightforward, isn't it? But sometimes it's not the case. Why? Because the satellite is very far from Earth. It's about, uh, about 750 kilometers. So the radar signal traveling from space to the ground will be affected by the atmospheric deep person. So uh, many INSA methods have been developed to improve the, the accuracy of measurements under the atmospheric disturbance. So what is the formula to overcome the problem? We are not just using two images, 
with a long series of cells over time. For science agreements, it is better to inform scientists about the active geophysics phenomena of a, a given area. It allows scientists to decompose contribution from different active phenomena, and therefore it enables better modeling for surface information. For technical agreement point of view, it allows measurements to be more accurate at most deformation phenomena develop slowly. It can reduce noise from the atmospheric artifacts and it, it uh, enables a better handle of a very technical problem or fire wrapping error thanks to more observation. So, uh, a time series data measures change to time for a particular day. This example data set will acquire over the area of the uh, Mexico area using Sandy One data satellite from uh, January 2007 and 17 and December 2019 for a particular day is in September of 2018. The phase usually should follow the consistent condition cap say that. The phase of a certain loop of the interferogram of three images, like the first and the second, and the second and the third, and the third, and the one that would be zero for any one scatter. However, phase can break, cannot follow the consistent condition if we're using a certain spatial average operator, like multi looking interferogram. We will be talking about, about it later. So, Thanks to long series of the data, we can identify uh, the stable targets with permanent or persistent scatters and good distributed scatter. And then the algorithm will be uh, only work will be only compute on the candidates and can remove noise very well. So basically, like the stable targets like the BS and the DS, like this one. We're not working on the forest area because why? Because it, the forest is crazy. We need to, we need to avoid it in in the current situation of the SAR configuration now. But in future, if we have a longer wavelength like the biomass mission with the band about 69 centimeter, in that case, the forest will become an objective to study. So the radar return is a coherence sum up on the elements in a given pixel. A distributed DS does not contain any dominant scatter in the resolution cell. Dealing with the time series DS means working on a random vector with zero means and a variance. So distributed targets occurs in nature environments with many similarly Bright scatter contribute to the information in a resolution cell. On the other hand, a persistent scatter does contain a dominant scatter in the resolution cell. Compared to the DS, the BS pixel phase must be stable and coherent, and therefore the BS will provide high quality information at the point target location. So the BS targets often uh, correspond to artificial objects widely available over an urban area. Few targets in nature can be the permanent rock powder. Uh, DS targets occur in nature environments like metal, fields, bare soil, and so on. In this, we can define all the other targets beside the DS should be DS. However, we focus on the promising candidate, which can be on soft vegetation, outcrops, or in uh, homogeneous ground. So uh, the principle of uh, the inside type theory is to take advantage of the redundancy information to minimize 
signal decorrelation to extract valuable signal robustly. So why many um, high series inside methods had been developed, had been implemented in the last 20 years, most of them say similar characteristics so that we we can classify it to two types of techniques based on how they account for signal decorrelation. The first category is um it based on the DS. So it is often possible to select uh several subsets with SOC baseline uh in terms of spatial and temporal like small baseline distributed scatter or small baseline success as path for analysis. However, the deformation measurements from, um, from the DS targets are often of low quality and require spatial multi-looking filtering. The second approach is the BS insert, which utilize, utilizes um, with use indiv individual scatter dominant the, the signal from a uh, resolution cell to track deformation through time. The BS uh, INSA technique provide high quality deformation information uh, as a point target location. And uh, nowadays the BS um, uh, in the literature or at the, in the history, the BSI is the, the first operating known INSA technique for the type theory analysis. So uh, let's talk about it. So the star, the parametric Mm, contributions have many components. They are they include about uh, the topographic phase, uh, deformation phase, and the atmospheric phase, uh, which represents about the signal delay due to the the, the weather condition and the noise. So uh, it is possible to remove the phase uh, related to the topography. Since we have the, the digital elevation model information available, our parameters uh, are the deformed phase and atmospheric phase. So the estimation of, um, of, of these parameters is possible only if the, um, the signal to noise uh, of the data is high enough. Uh, consequently, so instead of working on the entire limit, the analysis is just based on um, a certain uh, selective of the number of high coherence. So uh, the BS targets, we call it, this one is uh, the BS targets. And, and in that case, we can, we can assume that's what have a low noise. So uh, the, the BS targets can be found on criteria from uh, uh, from the amplitude based time series analysis. So, by, by working on the BS subsets only, we, we can systematically analyze its data, taking advantage of all available data sets so we don't lose anything. We can do the estimation and removal of the atmospheric phase screen with a high currency. We can extract the phase contribution due to the target motion with uh, high accuracy. So uh, let us consider um, the phase difference between two neighboring BS, uh, for example, uh, target I and O, which can uh, write in this form. So uh, where we, we have here is the, 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 the relative uh, elevation errors. This is a constant which related to phase to to high, and the, the, the um, uh, here is the, the the deformation information we can decompose in the two components. Or well, the the first component is the linear components, and the other one is non-linear components, and the atmospheric and and the noise. So uh, the delta uh, delta epsilon is uh, the relative elevation error. And the delta delta v is the relative constant velocity. Phase difference uh, can be um, modeled with a residue. 
So the phase residue is the phase difference between the model and the measurements. The residue phase variance is the sum of pre, -com pre -com contributions. Uh, this is nonlinear variance, nonlinear variance of motion, uh, atmospheric uh, variance and noise variance because they are independent random variables. So since we consider a pairs of um uh a pairs of uh, BS not too far apart, it implies low atmospheric um variance. For example, it should be less than zero point one radian square for low distance of one kilometer. Further, if um if the motion of neighboring targets is uh, correlated, so uh, nonlinear motion variance should be low also. Consequently, the noise of uh, the noise of the variance is low, as expected uh, by uh, by the definition of the BSP cell, and then and then it can be possible to estimate um, the delta epsilon and the delta velocity with a high decrease of accuracy. So uh, uh, usually that's we can uh, the relative error, uh, the relative errors of elevation uh, can be estimated at the slope of the line that uh, fits the difference of phase at the function of the baseline, at the function of baseline like this one. And uh, for the related constant velocity can be estimated at the slope of the at the slope of the bed fit line, the differential uh, the, the differential phase at the function of time. So, uh, but uh, in practice, usually that the related um, the related elevation errors and the relative constant velocity. Um, are jointly estimated as the values of the delta, delta um, epsilon and delta v that um, maximize the example uh, coherence and define in this way. So uh, basically, that's uh, the if the coherence, uh, the absolute uh, value, the absolute value of the coherence should um, varies from zero to one. So uh, basically, that where uh, a coherent value of one means uh, the com the complete fit uh, of the observed and the modern uh, phase, and if the sample coherence of a piece of um, uh, um, if the coherence if, if the coherence of um, BS pairs perhaps in lower than a certain uh, given threshold. So usually we like we get something like zero point. Uh, seven five is we we then be discussed uh, during the processing to be so that the data will be uh, high quality. So in this way, the um, the phase residue as well as the the delta epsilon and the delta v can be computed for every bit pair. So however, the um, when we do the, when we processing the la the we have to Take into a care, take into account that if the the larger distance of a BS pair should be kept about soft um, a typical average decoration length, for example, usually is about one kilometer, to to warranty that the condition of the uh, latent pi or the phase residue is fulfilled. So uh, whenever the the estimation of the delta um, epsilon. And the delta v, uh, so the related errors has been done. Our interested uh, parameter um, uh, epsilon and v can be calculated by integrating the related value. So basically, that the delta the delta value from pairs of neighboring p cell concerning a certain uh, preference point. So basically, that the point we know very well the elevation and the, the motion. So in other words, we can recover the, the unwrapped phase 
different um, dental feeds and integrate them over the whole network of the BS PCOs. So um, uh, the successful of this um, BS metrics is, uh, however, strongly depends on the density of the selected uh, BS. Uh, in case of the, um, the, the rural environment, or in, in nature or non-urban region, the BS techniques is likely to, to fail on those areas because its density does not um, sufficient to, to do interpolation, the atmospheric space screen during the, the processing. Uh, in that case, the combination with uh, DS can be best for all. The motivation for, for combining BS and DS is to reduce the sparsity of the grid for identifying measurement points and to maximize the amount of information available from interferogram. So uh, uh, we talk about the possibility of the interferogram uh, combination. So let, let's suppose that today is uh, um, and so it is available to do a combination and to do analysis. So the, all the image should be corrected on a reference uh, grid, like a reference day, like this one. So uh, like this case, we have um, the, um, the, configure, the, the configuration, what we call um, a, a liar star here. So uh, it's often to, um, to select a several uh, Success with a certain um, criteria like a soft baseline and a soft tie to um, uh, to uh, to do to minimize the decorations for analysis and finally it uh, can exploit all possible interferograms combinations and in this case we we work not only on the BS but also DS together but the, the question is how to identify a good DS so. Uh, uh, for identify uh, for identify the DS scatterer, so it's usually that um uh, several pixel sharing uh, the same statistically behavior uh, can be exploited to to enhance the DS signal to emulate the DS into uh, quasi BS. So we can find um, the familiar of statistically homogeneous pixel um, at its location by applying um, a certain two sample test uh, to, to decide it belongs to the familiar. And we can then compute its sample uh, interferometric coherence matrix by taking to advance of uh, its uh, family, the, um, the, the, the static, the, the statistically homogeneous pistol is. And the insta-coherence matrix uh, is our uh, leading actor in this technique because uh, using the, the co uh, using the co uh, the, the coherent matrix here, we uh, uh, we can uh, use it to exploit to estimate um, the linking phase, which are optimum from all the possible uh, interferometric matrix phase, and then the BS and the DS candidate can be selected. And uh, whenever the, the DS uh, available, the classes BS algorithm can be applied to estimate the displacement time series of its measurement point. So le let's move to um, uh, on demonstration. So uh, here I show you an area in um, in Kampa, uh, in uh, that is uh, an, uh, the site in one of the, um, the biggest coast mining in Vietnam. So which has been exploited for almost a, a century, a um, hundred years. So these figures using um, uh, about 117 sentinel one image from uh, the last five years. So uh, it's, it's generated by the, um, the classic BS techniques with about 29,500 um, points. Uh, so we see here the coverage of BSI is um, it's not so bad, but with the techniques of copper combinations, we can make an, uh, a comparisons of the, the measurement point density. So basically that uh, 
we improve about uh, 29,000 to about 126,000 points. So there's a lot of improvement. So the, uh, nowadays that the combination techniques uh, um, as an, uh, a replacement of the classic the BSI due to its remarkable outperformance, particularly in um, the non-urban area here. So consequently, this approach become the main technique for the surface deformation application nowadays. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the big data. So uh, as you may know that um, it's into one data, so everybody knows it's into one data, what it is. So it's free of charge and has massive data volume. So it's into one data is good for us, but also challenging for us because of the, the giants in uh, data or the fake information that need to be handled. So we have the techniques, we have the techniques that basically that algorithm are already there, but we cannot um, do it directly on the big data because it will be not really efficient. So for example, we, uh, we need a better strategy to, um, uh, to work on the uh, like, like to work on the review data, for example. And recently we have proposed a CAMSA uh, a feasible processing chain to account for both uh, persistent and distributed scatter in the big data inside. So uh, let's go into a, a little bit of the detail. So, so here is the technique uh, combination. So uh, the combination techniques is um, powerful. So uh, basically that is for everything possible to extract information. So, however, we need to, to calculate the full covariant matrix, the full coherent matrix uh, here. So the techniques can be inefficient when we have um, uh, many samples or, or when we have a new, a new acquisition, it's available. So the idea is to, um, to divide the masses data into many mini stack and then compress them. So it is possible with the fail linking techniques because the, the fail linking is well known for providing uh, the optimum estimation for for the phase. So in this way, the compressed phase the compressed phase is done by coherency by coherently summa summating the linking phase with the origin data here and to got the compressed version here. So given the um, the, the mini bus of tens like this one. Uh, so instead of processing about 19 emits, uh, we do with just only the nine emits here. And in this way, whenever a new acquisition is, uh, a new acquisition comes, uh, a new uh, acquisition available, we, don't, we do not need to uh, recalculate all again. And a such a compressed version can be used as a datum at the datum to, to link the history of the mini stack of mini stack with the recent acquisition and therefore is he able to reconstruct the complete phase type theory. So uh, regarding regarding memory requirement with the uh, 200 images images up uh, 500 to 2000 size like this one uh, 220 gigabyte is uh, for the combination technique, but only 45 gigabyte for the CAMSA. So third, CAMSA is much more friendly to big data processing. So we implemented the, the combination technique and the, the proposed CAMSA algorithm as an open uh, Tomosa Beke. And to our knowledge, that um, Tomusa is the first uh, public domain to, to available for everyone to, to handle BS and BS targets jointly. So uh, we uh, uh, in this uh, back case, we exploit all the open source like Snap uh, inside processor or ICE inside processor from um, uh, from the community of up, uh, up, um, NISA. Uh, so, so that the people can apply our algorithm uh, for an end-to-end -end processing change. So um, as an instructor of uh, IGAS for the last three years, 
on the radar interferometry, I received many recommendations from uh, young researchers for creating an interactive play to, to add and to, to help each other. So to meet this one, I start, start this um, interactive uh, forum for the community, so where the researcher can, um, can help each other, can share information and develop topics about um, our open source Tomosa and also everything in the inside field. So I'm, I'm happy that you can uh, join and contribute actively after this talk, for example, by sharing your practical lessons and your experience. For example, I extract uh, part of my lecture on persistent scatter inside Thai theory and make it available on, on my YouTube and then say it with the group. So, um, oh, uh, let's talk about, about the demonstration on um, Mekong Delta, or the new result um, uh, made by me. So now we um, compare the algorithm from uh, Tumosa and uh, Edbus from the most recently developed tools, Lispas. So um, we can uh, immediately see that using the more recent algorithm from Tumosa, the result is better in the same of uh, a denser distribution measurements. The rectangle here is the corresponding to um, Ho Chi Minh City, that is a very unstable area. And this one is related to a very stable uh, area in the Mekong Delta. So, um, uh, so uh, here we, um, we, we show that we can measure the average of subsidence trends over the past of five years uh, for the entire Mekong Delta in the frame of about 10 million points, 10 million point measurements. So green is, um, is stable. So a red indicates an, an um, unstable infrastructure area. So we can map the subsidence for a very large area like 250 kilometer and 350 kilometers. So to, to valid, we first consider comparing to the results of um, a small resin analysis. So we do exactly the same, but we just focus on small resin. And then let's move to Ho Chi Minh City for, um, for detail. So, and this figure uh, was reduced by using the, the same graph as the one on the last scale. So uh, the cross distribution is showing here. So uh, horizontal is small one and the vertical is the large one. So um, indicating an, um, an identical space distribution with less than uh, about one millimeter per year difference. So here are the results from three different star data set. So, but they, they almost say the same subsidence distribution of course, if we go into detail, there will be a little bit different in the profile alums A and B here, but uh, you see it's a very uh, tiny. So uh, we can even go back to in Thai to see how the subsidence is progressive. So basically it's quite uh, linear. So we take um, a closer look at the famous area in um, uh, uh, a very much um, area around um, in the center of uh, the city to to see uh, in the Ben of Saigon River to see the phenomena over there. So uh, it's um, easy to to see that uh, this area is around um, the areas of Nguyen uh, Hoc um, and this area is a very unstable due to its underlying geology is not solid. So the critical subsidence can be observed. So uh, the subsidence, usually the, the, the critical subsidence here is uh, devastated the rods and require the regular maintenance and elevation. So we compare the, um, our inside analysis with uh, the preference velocity for quantitative validation and increase with an um, error uh, three millimeter per year. So um, take home message. 
So um, the combination of DS and DS is powerful. Tamsa is a friendly bit data processing. Tomosa is the first published domain tool to handle BS and DS jointly. Uh, commands and questions are welcome in the um, radar in the theorem metric group. So uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>